Hi everybody. Bear with me for a minute while I tell a little bit of backstory about why I am here today showing you this video. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine, a amazing, kind, giving, caring soul who I've known for ages posted something on Facebook about discovering a special sauce. It's really all this was about, the special sauce. And I read through it and I was like, holy shit. This isn't just any special sauce. This is Mr. Crosby's special sauce from Crosby's snack bar, which we used to call Crosby's chicken. I did a little bit of research on this sauce and found the original post from the company in, I believe it's Kilmarnock, maybe it's Whitestone, Virginia, uh, selling this sauce. And I found that post and I shared it. And I shared it with the story of what the man behind this special sauce meant to me. As a teenager growing up in this small Virginia area, we used to go into Crosby's snack bar every weekend, pretty much. And it's how we would round up our evenings. Uh, small town, you'd go to the beach, you'd ride around, maybe you'd go to a party, maybe you'd go hang out with friends, but you always ended your weekends as a teenager, as long as you had a car to get out there and get over the bridge. You always ended your weekends with Mr. Crosby. This man, you guys, this man, he was I'm gonna cry. I've already cried today. He was an amazing soul. And you know what was really cool about him is that he was a storyteller and he wasn't afraid to tell his story. And he always told his stories in ways that resonated with us teenagers so that we all walked out of there after listening to Clarence Carter on his jukebox <laughs> with a lesson in our heads to think about. And we'd go back the next weekend and we'd be like, Mr. Crosby, remember when you said, what'd you mean by that? And he'd start again. <laughs> we never went in there for his chicken, although it was amazing, especially with his special sauce. We went in there for him. We went in there to connect with a soul who had seen more than we could ever imagine as teenagers. And he did more for me, and I'm sure for all of my friends and all of the, the teenagers who crossed his path over the years, even the adults, than we ever let him know. When I shared this post on social media, I did it in such a way that introduced my connection with this gentleman, this kind soul who affected me so many years ago. And I mentioned just in passing that a few years ago when I started rewriting Just Jewels, which I'm hoping will come out next year. Guys, I wrote this book in 2014. I mean, I'm not kidding. This is a long book. Um, um, it's not a long book. It's a long process because I gave it up for a couple of years. I stopped writing for a couple of years and, and you guys, you don't need to know my story or you already do. Um, Jerry in Just Jewels is completely based off of Mr. Crosby. And I, and I did it on purpose, but without really realizing it. And it wasn't until I was writing maybe even in that rewrite, that first rewrite, that I gave this old man who owns this drugstore in Colorado, Jerry, in, in my book, not Mr. Crosby, and I gave him green eyes. That was the moment that I kind of realized, you're going back and you're pulling stuff 
from people who meant something to you, which is what we do as writers, right? We pull from our lives. Sometimes, you know, we put you in a book and we kill you off because that's what we want to do with you. Sometimes we put you in a book and we give you purpose because you passed on incredible, profound knowledge or skills, or you just touched us in some way. That's Mr. Crosby for me. And that's Jerry in Just Jewels. Mr. Crosby has a grandson or several, I believe, um, who has recreated his sauce or has created it with his own hands passed, you know, from the recipe passed down. So incredible. His grandson's wife got in touch with me on Facebook after reading this post that I wrote comparing my character Jerry to Mr. Crosby and sharing the, the just the profound impact that Mr. Crosby had on my life and on this character that I have built. And she sent me a package. And I know there's thoughts in here because she told me. And I'm gonna open it and you guys are probably gonna watch me cry. But I wanna open it with my trusty pencil because, you know, <laughs> ready for it. Because <laughs> I don't know how to use knives, evidently. With my trusty pencil. And I'm gonna go through this. I'm not opening it with my trusty pencil. I have to open it with my trusty pencil because I don't have a knife. I don't know. No. Everybody who's ever been around me in a box has always been like, you need a box cutter. So we have some packing peanuts. <gasps> oh, you guys. Oh, there's a card. But there, I had heard about this. You guys, look. That's it. That's the snack bar. I had heard that he had written something. Copyright December 1991. I graduated high school in 1991. Maybe that's why I had heard and never saw it because if I was gone from the county by 92, 93. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm not gonna read it on camera. I'm sorry, you guys were just watching me cry. Oh, look, at, look at this man right here. Look at this man right here. I can't, I can't do this on camera. I will read this until I'm sure this is from you. I will read this off of camera because I'm already. It's sauce, you guys, this is sauce. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys have no idea if you've ever had a person impact your world the way this man impacted the lives of the teenagers in this tiny little area not even just my town because i was from the other side of the river so all over from from at least three counties this this man affected people from all over oh that's an even better picture oh mr crosby god bless you child that's what he would say. That's what he would say. We would put Clarence Carter on his jukebox and he would sing and we would sing. And oh, this is, I, okay, let's talk about the sauce because I'm making chicken tonight. And we're using this. Oh my goodness. Originally created in 1954 by William Crosby in Lancaster, Virginia. Oh, from our family to yours. Calvin 
who is Mr. Crosby's grandson and Calvin's wife, Angela. I can't thank you enough. From Arizona to Virginia. Oh, you guys have... I can't wait to share Jerry with you. I hope I don't disappoint that he, he's not Mr. Crosby, but I hope he has the impact on the characters that I built around him that Mr. Crosby had on me. I hope that comes through when, if you read Just Jules one day, because he was a great, but no, I'm crying, I'm dripping. <laughs> he was a great man and what an honor. What an honor to to have these things and, and this card, which I'm sure will make me cry more, sent to me all the way from Virginia, all the way out here to Arizona. I can't wait for you to meet Jerry and know that I created Jerry and his trauma and his struggles and his love and his compassion for life and the connection and friendship that he has with the little boy in my book, Riker, I created that out of the love that I saw from this man right here. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. So let me, let me give this, I hope that's clear, because if you are anywhere in Virginia, you need to order. It is now called Northern Neck Sauce. This is Mr. Crosby's special sauce. You need to order some. I will, wherever I share this, I will send a link. I will share a link to, um, I don't even remember the, the little shop that I shared it from originally, but I will share that so you guys can support this family as well and their sauce and what they're doing to keep this alive. Created in 1954, you guys. This is a recipe from 1954. It's probably a recipe that even went before 1954. And I knew this man in the 1980s, in the early, early 90s. What a special soul he was. Thank you for sharing him. Thank you.